The White House announced the experimental drug remdesivir has shown real promise as a therapy for the coronavirus. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sherry Jackson. And I'm Jack Royer. Late this afternoon, doctors from UAB discussed their role in studying the use of remdesivir as a treatment for COVID-19. The data showed an improved recovering time in patients given remdesivir. Some patients at UAB Hospital were part of a study of over 1,000 COVID-19 patients who were treated with either remdesivir or a placebo. We're told the results of the study were supposed to be released in mid-May, but because of its success, researchers felt an ethical obligation to publish their findings sooner. We spoke to a doctor today with UAB's Infectious Disease Division on when remdesivir could receive FDA approval. This is certainly going to be fast-tracked, um, but uh, I suspect it will be fairly soon. Right now, uh, uh, many people are getting remdesivir on what's called a compassionate use basis. Um, and I'm not sure if they're going to expand that or they're going to quickly approve it. There is still no FDA approved treatment for the coronavirus. That is important to note, but this good news, doctors say their next step is to receive approval to administer remdesivir to the patients that receive the placebo drug in that same study. And joining us now is Dr. Jody Dion Odom, assistant professor at UAB's Division of Infectious Diseases. And I guess the, the science world in general is very excited about this news. Can you talk about that part of excitement and having something to effectively treat coronavirus? Yeah, you know, everything we've been doing so far um, with physical distancing is making a big difference, but it's buying us time so we can have these clinical trials to identify new drugs and then new vaccines that are really going to work. So this is the first um, drug that we've seen have an effect in this study, which was very well designed, over 1,000 people, as you mentioned, in 68 different clinical study sites, including UAB. Um, and what it showed is this drug did have an effect in the patients who received it and reducing the amount of time um, to clinical improvement. So that's really exciting for everybody. We've been looking for some hope in this pandemic, and this drug gives us that. And so I guess people, there, there's not a particular standard of care, right? So this has reduced the amount of time a person has been in the hospital by four days. What is the, the typical care for a person who comes to the hospital and ends up admitted for COVID-19? So there's a wide spectrum of disease, as you've heard. Um, the patients to get into this trial had to be relatively sick. They needed to be in the hospital requiring oxygen therapy. Some of them were on a breathing machine. Um, and this drug was given through the vein for 10 days. So it was a long period of time for some of the more sick of our patients. Um, it's not going to be, it wasn't studied in patients who are outpatients or patients who are healthy enough not to have to come into the hospital. But to have an option for these people who are so sick on a breathing machine is really, again, um, you know, we're, we're pleased today to start to have some, some drugs to use. And so we listened in a little bit on the, the news conference today where there was a little talk about maybe because this is in, administered IV right now, that there could be a process of getting this into a pill form. Is that something you can address? I know that the drug company is working on it. The question is going to be, is this drug effective at other outcomes? Does it improve mortality? Does it work in patients who are less ill? Um, we like when we have a, drugs that work to have an IV option and a pill option so we can pick the best choice for the patient and have no doubt these studies will be um, will be done. And so science takes time and we get that part of the equation as people are listening now and tomorrow in Alabama we will be relaxing some of the social distancing rules in our state. Um, what is your advice for that on the, the front line of defense still being protecting ourselves from exposure? Uh, what does this possibility of a treatment mean for people um, as they continue to try to protect themselves? You know, I think the major point is, is that we've made a big difference in Alabama with the stay at home guidelines. People have really done a good job staying in and that's what's led us to be able to handle the upsurge in cases at UAB and other hospitals around the state. We're still seeing about 200 new cases diagnosed every day. So it's not that the virus is gone. Um, I would encourage people to continue to, to um, shelter at home when they can and follow the guidelines. I think Governor Ivey has done a really good job looking at the data and listening to the science to guide us to slowly reopen, continuing to watch these case counts, 
so that we don't overburden the healthcare system um, and we know where we are. We have more testing available in every county now in Alabama, and that's really important to be able to monitor the disease in every community. And so we know the healthcare workers, again, being on the front line and just the, the amounts of, um, this, is, this is hopeful for those people who are in the hospitals doing the work and interfacing with patients, right? It is. The hardest thing when you have patients who are so sick with a new virus is to, have tell, to tell them and their families that we can give great supportive care, but we don't have an antiviral yet. So now this option of having a drug that we can use that shows some efficacy and safety against the virus specifically is very exciting. Thank We're you. all pleased today. Thank you so much. That's Dr. Jody Dion Odom with UAB's Infectious Disease. Thank you so much for talking with us. Of course. Thanks for having me. Well, tonight